When it comes to mental health, the stats are shocking. According to Beyond Blue, one in seven people will experience depression in their lifetime, while one quarter of Australians will experience anxiety. Now, academics are funneling their focus towards food. They're looking at the link between fueling up and feeling down. Today, we're revealing the mental hijackers lurking in your fridge and pantry and serving up the powerful foods to boost your mood. And we welcome back nutritionist and author of Eat, Drink and Still Shrink, Michelle Chevalier. Head. Michelle, nice to see Hi, you Michelle. again. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Genetic stress, grief, there's so many causes for mental disorders. How tightly is food connected to things like anxiety and like depression? Absolutely, Sally. So with mental health, we know that it's multifactorial, right? Things like, as you said, stress, um, genetics, viruses, those are things we cannot control. But mm. what we can control is what we eat. Mm. And the research is pointing to that food and mood is definitely affected. And we have some of the leading research coming out of our very own Deakin University with the SMILES trial, which proves that nutrition can underpin depressive factors in three to four months. Mm -hmm. OK, well, let's okay. get some um, practical tips, uh, shall we, Michelle? Now, you say uh, if you have too little fat uh, in our diet, it's not such a great thing. So just explain fats in our diet and why they can actually be good. Yes, I say that we have too little good fats in our diet. We have lots of an abundance of trans fats in our diet. Mm. Things in processed food, things in packaged foods, those aren't serving us. But our omega-3s and our good quality fats like olive oil, seeds and nuts, cold water fish, all of those are packed with omegas that have direct influence, a positive influence on our brain cells and our mood modulating um, cells as well, like things like serotonin, our happy hormones. Yeah. So people who are, I guess, focused on a real fat-free eating approach, how does that harm your mental health? Our brains are made up of 60% fat. Our mm. brains really love those good quality fats. And the research is showing us, Sally, those people that underpin themselves with perhaps even sometimes a supplement, a good quality supplement, and feeding ourselves good fat is really good for modulating those serotonin and GABA and serotonin, all those things that we want for our happy hormones to be lifting ourselves from depressive-like symptoms. And now we often say if we get a bit of a sugar fix, mm. that can boost our mood. Is that, that actually the case if we have a piece of cake or a cookie or a chockey or something well, like that? Well, as you know, I am the nutritionist that never says never, right? So mm -hmm. I like people to have a little bit of indulgences every now and again. That's not going to hurt people. What is going to hurt people and really will affect people's moods is when they start their day with sugar and they end their day with sugar. For example, a bowl of cereal with 10 teaspoons of hidden sugar, mm -hmm. the banana muffin that's the size of a doorstop with another 8 teaspoons of sugar, mm -hmm. the muesli bar and the vitamin water in the afternoon, 15 teaspoons mm. of sugar. So all of a sudden, we're on this type of swing all day long, and people are thinking it's a mood swing or a mood issue, mm -hmm. when the reality is their blood sugar is going up, right. dropping them off. Going up, dropping them off. So they're in brain fog, they get the flatsies, they're exhausted, they feel like they have anxiety or depression, mm. but perhaps it's not. Perhaps it's this. It's the sugar. Okay. So let's talk about your tips then, uh, I guess, to rounding out the, the I guess the, the perfect solution eliminating food hackers yeah I love people to go back to eating real whole food unpackaged and unprocessed as often as possible mm. ditch the processed sugar so you're not thinking that you're on a mood swing realize that you're actually on a sugar swing do not go no carb go slow carb because slow carbs will feed your energy give you back your vitality your ability to connect with people in good moods such as Oh, good quality carbs. Sweet potatoes are my favorite. Brown uh -huh. rice. Brown rice, mm -hmm. quinoa. But you know, I really worry about people that go carbless. Right. They're exhausted. Often they're in brain fog. So bring back the love of smart carbs and use them wisely to feed your brain and yep. feed your good heart. And uh, also proteins and, and protein healthy fats on there as stabilizes well. your blood sugar as well as good quality fats will stabilize your blood sugar. Bring back Real whole food. Just eat real food, right? Just eat real food. Michelle, great. Thank you. You always leave us on quite a positive note. Yes, we feel you. healthier for it, but, you know, positive at the same time. That's rare. I want to bring Thanks, back Michelle. the love of food, right? You're yeah. doing it. You're doing yeah. it. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. Thank you. Stay with us. We're back with more in a moment.